Uh, my name is Ludwig Bukowski. I'm junior Erlang developer uh, at Erlang Solutions, and I think we'll spend the next 20 minutes uh, together. The topic of my speak is uh, Magus AM, messaging for uh, mobile, and I'd like to speak about three things about the Magus AM release and the features that we have with this version. Uh, about problems that we face during our development and the solutions and how we deal with it. And also, I will speak about my our workflow, uh, how we build things, how we test stuff. So, basically, what is Mongoose IAM? I'd like to explain also what is the XMPP, XMPP protocol. It stands for Extensible Message and Presence Protocol. Generally speaking, it's the chat. So it has been designed in RFC 6120. It is asynchronous, and it's based on XML. Uh, there are a few advantages that it's uh, used, because, yes, we use it still. Uh, it's proven, so it has been uh, developed since the 98. Uh, and there are a lot of libraries, a lot of implementations, and a lot of uh, clients that still uh, use it as a protocol. It is secure, comes with uh, strong authentication methods and uh, built-in TLS support. It's also decentralized, that means anyone can run his own XMPP server and uh, you can connect it to the federation of the servers and it works as a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Mangus AM is the implementation, is the server, and it's scalable, it's robust, and it's written in Erlang. So, as I said before, uh, it has a lot of extensions, but there is the one, the most popular, and uh, I think the oldest one, which is the group chat. We, everybody knows the group chat, we use it in work, uh, for example, in HipChat, uh, WhatsApp, or Slack application. So, I'd like to come with a little bit of practice. Uh, how do we connect to the group chat in the XMPP protocol. So let's assume that we have already connected to the server, we have talked for a while with our friends, and uh, we, join the, jo we join the room. We need to send the element, it's called presence, it's taken from the name message and presence protocol, and we need to send it directly to the room to inform the other members that we are that we are in, and back we will get the result, which is the presences from all members of the room. And it's uh, done every, uh, every, every, day, every day we want to uh, join the room. When we are in, we can talk, but, but, but when we are logged off, we can't receive uh, messages. We have to join uh, room once again. So, it looks quite simple. But uh, is it really a good solution? Uh, not exactly, because it was designed to replicate the old IRC uh, multi-chats. So it means that we have to enter the room and we have to leave the room. When we came with our devices and the network that we have in our phones, uh, we mm, faced a bit of problems. Sometimes you go to the elevator, go through the tunnel, channel, uh, and enable the flight mode, for example, when going for a journey. So you constantly lose your connection, and it means, from the XMPP point of view, that you uh, are leaving the room, and when you leave the room, you don't receive the notification, etc. so you have, to, you have to rejoin the room once again. I like examples, and this is one of these. Imagine that we have a room with 1,000 people inside, uh, I measured with Wireshark that the present size is about more than 300 bytes. And uh, every user, because we have the mobile app, have uh, mm, been disconnecting every 10 minutes. Uh, I did a quick math, and it looks like we receive more than 5.5 megabytes per hour just to maintain our room. So it means that it's completely useless because uh, it's... Only presence, we don't have any messages, and additionally, sometimes we need to fetch the history when we come back, so uh, it's, it's not good. Yes, that's true. Uh, in our presentation template, I had the code slide, so there is it. Uh, and it basically means that we have to move on and we have to sometimes get rid of the obsolete protocols. 
In our Krakow office, we designed the new version of multi-user chat, which is called multi-user chat Lite. And uh, it was designed by our colleague Piotr Nosek. Mm, and actually, the idea wasn't the just decision from one day. It was evolving uh, in time, and we just needed to fit the customer needs, and we came with this new protocol. Uh, what has been changed? We completely got rid of the presence, so you just can be invited to the room, and you are in the room every time, uh, ever. So you want, if you want to leave the room, you just need to change the affiliation list. Uh, Additionally, we changed a bit uh, message routing in our protocol, in our server. So a little bit of Erlang here. In Mangusaim architecture, we represent every connection by uh, process. And when one user talks to the another, just send the Erlang message. In multi-user chat implementation, we had additional process for a room. And it was taking the messages from every occupants and sent to the other members. Uh, it was some kind of bottleneck here. So we just get rid of this additional process here. And we uh, send message in context of user. It gives us um, possibility to have a better support for uh, distribution in our uh, Mangozaim cluster, for example. And uh, in, finally, we have... Um, have better handling the big rooms because in old implementations we, we have spikes of latency and timeouts when we try to measure the uh, time to delivery. And I will show the graphs in a moment. And as I said before, uh, you, has, you have to be invited to the room. You can't just uh, join it and, uh, and leave. But it's because we just don't have a presence anymore. So we did some of load tests. Uh, this is the new implementation. So we can see that it's about 50,000 users. And the, uh, the average latency in, on this graph, because we just made a scenario when we have about 50 rooms. Because yes, it's 50 rooms. Every room has uh, 1,000 users. And we were measuring the time to deliver. It means that when users send the message, we he just added the timestamp to the message, and the receiver just compared those uh, values, and uh, we put it to the gra graphite and visualized it. Blah, 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 sorry, uh, in Grafana, uh, it looks nice because when we compare it to the legacy multi-user chat, we have a uh, much more latencies here because it's about in some point more than. 70 seconds waiting for a message, and here we didn't. We just have about more than 300 milliseconds. Uh, at the beginning, it's just only uh, more than three seconds because the test have to be started. So how have we tested it? We have our internal uh, architecture. I would call it infrastructure better. Uh, we run Mangozaim nodes in Docker, Docker containers. And we have a separate node that generates the client side. We use a tool called Amok. This is our internal uh, on our internal repository. It's open source also. How does it work? Uh, it simulates the clients. It's just a simple Erlang implementation. You have a module that has callback, which is the start function, and takes as an argument the ID, which is unique int integer, and you can do anything with this integer. For example, generate username like user1, user7, etc. So we spawn 50,000 processes, and every process uh, implements the start function, and having this integer, we can just do some modular, opera modular operations in order to do some tricks, like every 10 user generates room, and every 12, for example, uh, write a message. We have also black box and white box tests. Uh, white box are quite boring, but bl black we like very much. It's separate node when we generate the client side. And uh, we don't have, almost we don't have uh, any connection between the XMPP server and the users. We use our internal library, which is called Escalus and uh, AXML, uh, to generate the tests. We parallelize them and 
it's super cool. Uh, I like it because you don't have to worry about registering users or uh, the stuff like connection step. You just have built-in compression TLS support. But going back to the mobiles, uh, so we have the, our implementation of the multi-user light chat. It's just simple because we are subscribed to a room and we got notifications every time the user uh, and the user sends the message. So it seems that it's quite familiar to another pattern. If you could, uh, no, I think you are familiar with the, this pattern. It's called publish subscribe. Uh, and this, it's additional uh, feature, I would call it feature, uh, we came with uh, for our Mongoose IM 2.0.0 release. Uh, it's simple, we have uh, quite a bunch of publishers, the topic channel and the subscribers. It's been uh, reported in uh, XEP, which is a XMPP announcement protocol, 6.0, publish subscribe, and we came with some uh, plugins. Uh, for example, you can have flat uh, namespace of trees, or we have the whole hierarchy when you can subscribe to the top root node and got notifications from every, uh, every chi child. Uh, what's important about the pubs app? There's not just uh, mobile applications, not just the desktop clients, but you can also have your own web real-time application based on the publish subscribe pattern. Uh, for example, WordPress, YouTube, they use this uh, mechanism, so it opens door to some additional uh, possibilities. So why don't we use PubSub instead of group chat? It's quite important. Uh, it's always because the, of the details. Basically, the tree structure, we don't have it in the group chat implementation, we have just flat namespace. PubSub have uh, support for such a um, making this tree. We have also participant lists in our group chat. We don't have it in sub publish subscribe. It means that we can't know another subscribers and don't know how many uh, publishers there are. Administrations, uh, yes, we can kick, ban users if you don't like them. We don't have it in PubSub. And we can also switch to the mode in our, uh, I don't want to say PubSub once again, but I have to, in our PubSub implementation that we don't receive whole payload, sometimes it's too big. We can just not have a notification that there is something new and we can check it if we send additional request. And in case of uh, multi-user legacy only, chat room, uh, you don't have presence in, presences in PubSub. Looks like that's, that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, Okay, do we have any questions? I think we have time for a few questions. Just one quick one. This is still compatible. Sorry. Th this is still compatible with the normal XMPP. Yes. Okay. So. I mean, because you're changing how things are being sent or, or the way things are routed through things. It's a new extension. So you need to have the client implementations. And that's a good question, because we have. We have the contribution to the SMAC library for Android mm -hmm. and to the uh, iOS framework. So actually, right now, we support both server and client side. And in multi-user conference, uh, you showed that uh, each user sends messages to all other user processes. But how do they know uh, which users join in this conference and which are not? Each user have full list of participants or what? Yes, there is uh, such a list. You just have to request a list when you join the room. But you do, you do it once, actually. You don't have it every time you are logged in. OK. Excellent. Anyone else? If not, thank you very much, Ludwig. Thanks.